I don't know about you, but sometimes all I want to do is kick back, stick on a film or whatever's on Netflix and find some gold without having to think. If that sounds like you and that's your kind of thing, then welcome to the channel. My name is Chazit and in this video I'm going to talk you through some of my favourite chilled out gold farms that don't require any prep, specific primary professions or frankly any brain power. Now the first chilled out farm is in Netherstorm and we're going to be killing the mage slayers and mana seekers in the southern part of the zone at Kirinvar village. These mobs are absolutely everywhere so you're highly unlikely to run out and you can just chain kill them. They also have the added benefit of a really fast respawn timer so you can clear the area, return to the start and you'll have a load of fresh mobs to kill. They do have one annoying ability though called spell reflect which does exactly what it says on the tin. Reflects a spell back at you so make sure that you're killing these to watch out when that is up. Now we're killing these mobs to get the moats of mana which have a high drop chance of around 25%. These moats combine in lots of 10 to make primal might which is used to make absolutely tons of high end crafted gear as well as being a reagent for primal might. With that being the case and the gear spanning for most of the phases in TBC there's going to be a strong demand for these moats throughout the entire expansion so this isn't just a one hit wonder farm. Data from recent private servers would suggest that we could see around 50 gold per primal mana, which gives us an estimated gold per hour of around 200 to 250 gold. Next up we have another moat farm, this time focused on getting moats of life from fungal giants in Zangamarsh. These guys are found in this southwest part of the zone, just east of the spawning glen, and they're in abundance, so by the time you've cleared through the area, you should be seeing respawns where you first started. Now these particular mobs have the added benefit of giving you Sporagar rep up to Honoured, so if you still need to farm that rep then you can kill two birds with one stone. Motes of life can be turned into primal life which is also used in the primal might transmute so you're going to have constant demand as the expansion goes on. Primal life is also a reagent in many phase 1 pieces of armour so there should be very strong demand for these at the very start of the expansion. But that's not all as these guys also drop the quest items unidentified plant parts and the bog lord tendrils which are used in repeatable quests to give rep for scenarian refuge and sporagar respectively. These don't sell for loads of gold, but at the rate you're likely to get them, they'll add a little bit of bonus gold on top of what you're already going to get from the Primal Life. Now Primal Life sits at around 15 gold on average if we look at the data from recent private servers. There isn't a huge amount of data for the plant parts or tendrils, but the general consensus is around 20 silver each. With optimal conditions, I can see this farm achieving around 175 to 200 gold per hour. Next up we're going to Terracar Forest and the focus of this farm is the basilisks and spiders that are all around the zone. There are two types of basilisk, the damp scale basilisk and the iron spine petrifier, whilst only one type of spider, the dreadfang lurker. I put together a circular route to follow that will have respawns up by the time you're back to the start. And these guys drop a couple of items of interest, the ones we're mainly focused on however are the chunk of basilisk, damp scale basilisk eye and the dreadfang venom sack. Chunk of Basilisk is used in the Blackened Basilisk cooking recipe which is going to be one of the go-to buff foods for DPS casters throughout the expansion. Given how focused many people are on PvE, I feel these are going to sell steadily throughout. And the second item is the Damp Scale Basilisk Eye which is an item used in a repeatable quest for the Scryers which gives rep for people who wish to swap faction from the Aldor to the Scryers. Each quest takes 8 eyes and requires 250 rep so players who wish to make the swap are going to have to obtain a crazy amount of these. On the other foot we have the Dreadfang Venom Sack which is used for the same thing as the Damp Scale Basilisk Guy but for people going from the Scryers to the Aldor. And due to the vast sums of these required for the quest turn-ins, both these items should have incredible demand throughout the whole expansion. On recent private servers, Chunk of Basilisk have sold for an average of around 3 gold each, whilst the Eyes and Venom Sacks are both going for around 5 gold each. Now it really depends on competition, but I can see people earning upwards of 300 gold per hour on this farm and possibly even more if there is a spike in value around new raid releases. Another of my favourite ways to brain dead farm is by fishing. In the Burning Crusade we have two options, fish for buff food or fish for moats of water. I've gone through these in depth in another video specifically on the topic which you can find links to in the description and the pinned comments. The final farm is focused on Sun Fury Blood Elves, located around the Mana Forges in Netherstorm. My personal favourite Mana Forge to focus on is the Mana Forge Banar in the southwestern tip of the zone. This is a huge circular structure with packs and packs of Sun Fury mobs around it. These packs of mobs have a high chance of dropping Sun Fury Signets and Arcane Tomes, which are used to increase your rep with the Squires. These are going to have constant use as people look to quickly get exalted with a faction as they level up new characters. 
A full lap of this place could take you up to an hour depending on how well geared you are and therefore how fast you can go, but you'll be well rewarded. Looking at the data from back in the day, typically signets would sell for around a gold each and tomes for around 15 gold each. And given the rampant inflation in Classic and data from recent private servers, I could imagine we could see up to 2 gold per signet and 20 gold per tome, and likely higher than that in the early phases. I completed a lap of the Mana Forge killing all the mobs and received 49 signets and 5 tomes, and admittedly this is a bit of guesswork and RNG, but going by these numbers we could see around 200 gold per hour from this farm. So that concludes my list of chilled out farms in the Burning Crusade that can net you some really good returns. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to drop it a like. And if you'd like to see more guides like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And with that guys, I'll see you in the next video.